I'm gonna call the therapist that Curtis went to. I'm gonna ask him some questions. <sighs> They thought that I made the choice to be gay. When you're having those feelings, you have to shut them down. So putting you in the same category uh -huh. as a rapist. Gays get AIDS and they die. You're going to hell. I guess my main question is... My name is Sean Scarborough and I went to Exodus International. Exodus International, which was created in 1976, is by far the most well-known and widely spread ex-gay organization. But like with Curtis's story, conversion therapists are everywhere. They found this counselor um, in Kentucky and we went to him and he was a conversion therapist. Curtis's therapist is still actively working out of his house in Kentucky to this day. Where are you from originally? Uh, so I'm originally from Southern Illinois, about seven hours outside of Chicago, Benton. Is it a small town? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 7,000 people. With all the conservative mindsets there, the, um, the thinking is very much gays get AIDS and they die. Mm -hmm. and so like, you know, my 13, 14, however old I was, probably 12, um, was like, holy shit, <laughs> you know, like I'm gonna die. die. So when I discovered that I was, that I like boys, I really just kind of kept it suppressed and I didn't really think about it until high school and you know when I started going through puberty that's when I was like oh I can't ignore this anymore yes, <laughs> you yes, know? yeah like oh shit when you came out how did people react well the friends were supportive they were like oh my gosh like are you serious I'm like yeah here it is you know were you nervous to tell your parents oh yeah it kind of happened on accident tell me about that yeah. so I just got my license I was 16 and one of my friends lived in the town or her boyfriend lived in the next town over, which at the time, like, I had just got my license, so I couldn't leave town without permission. And so I asked them, because she had asked me for a ride to go see her boyfriend, and they told me no. And they thought that was really weird that she would ask me to go to take her to her boyfriend. Like a straight guy, a straight guy taking a girl. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Right, they told me to go home, and so I went home, and then uh, my dad asked me, he's like, you know, it's really weird. You know, that he would be okay with you doing that. That would only be okay if the guy was gay. I'm like, are you gay? And I was like, yeah. And then he says, well, we love you anyway. But oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened between then and, you know, what happened later. And I had been, like, on... God, what, what, what was the platform? It was one of those virtual spaces where you had like an avatar. It was basically like chat rooms, right? Yeah, but it was like a virtual thing where you could like create this persona. And they had gotten on the computer and they looked through everything and saw that I was talking to other men. They found that and that freaked them out. That's really where it got started. I told them I wanted to see a therapist because I was struggling with depression and anxiety. They found this counselor um, in Kentucky. And we went to him, and he was a conversion therapist. So. And you didn't know going into it that he was a conversion therapist? Well, I didn't even know conversion therapy was. But I went to a private Christian high school, actually a private from like elementary to my senior year, and it was called Calvary Chapel. I wasn't the one that came out to my family. I told my brother's girlfriend at the time that I like, kind of had these feelings and I was just working through it. And it was just like an average conversation, nothing like, oh, I'd be gay and this is scary or anything like that. It was just a conversation. She took it and went to my high school at the time. And then they forced me to go there or to get kicked out of my high school. One of the things that he and my parents wanted me to understand was that being gay is a choice. When you're having those feelings, you have to shut them down. You go read the Bible or you go see why it's wrong. I needed to do more masculine characteristic activities. This is the reason why, and this is the reason why, and this is why you're wrong and you're going to hell. So I had to study women to find characteristics in women that complimented me. That was their, their mantra. At that point, what was your feeling about this? Were you like, okay, yes, I'm gonna do these things? Or were you like, this is all bullshit? You know, I actually thought it was bullshit. I was just like, it was all crazy to me. There was one point when he told me that like rapist murderers 
rageaholics and child molesters, homosexuals, are predispositioned to sin, just like they are. And it's up to me if I act on my sin or not. Just like it's up to a rapist and a murderer and a child molester if they act upon their sinful nature. So putting you in the same category uh -huh. as a rapist and... Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, I mean, that's the, the, you know, that you see that a lot. Well, I guess, you know, I can't be straight, so I'm just gonna be asexual, right? I'll just tell them I'm asexual, and so I did, and he told me that's fine because eunuchs are praised in the Bible. I'm like, that's not the same thing. You preach about love and acceptance, but then you're not allowing love and acceptance to happen, and that's what I didn't love. So your depression got worse by mm -hmm. going to this person, so eventually you stopped going. Yes. My family said it was because of money, which it was because of money, but that was part of it. But also, um, my parents were also getting like depressed and like, my dad told my mom, he's like, I don't want to go. Like, I don't want to go back to this guy. Like, I don't want to go today. My mom's like, I don't want to go either. And so we just didn't. It was on the car ride home that I remember like talking to my brother and I was like, I'm out. Like, I'd, I'd, I'm not going to change who I am if this is who I am to be something that I'm gonna perceive not to be when in a year from now I'm gonna be who I want to be. After I graduated from Rin Lake College, uh, I had to go finish my bachelor's at a four-year college, so I moved away five hours. I went up there for something called Scholar's Day, which was, you know, I was trying out for scholarships. It was very strange. I was riding with my dad, my mom wasn't going with, and we went up there, and we stayed the night, and I walked off and did my thing, and I guess, you know, just seeing me walk away it was like, oh shit, our son is actually moving out of the house, you know. It's symbolic. My dad says that it was like he heard a voice in his head that said, you know, your son's walking away, he's gonna keep walking unless you change your thinking. He apparently went back to the hotel, called my mom, they had a whole big thing that she'd been feeling the same way, and I get in the car, and I get, we're getting an hour outside of town, so we can still go four hours in the car and he goes, son, I need to talk to you about something. And he just told me that, you know, being gay is something that gets in the way of my relationship with them, then it doesn't matter. And they were wrong and that they're sorry and, you know, so that was it. Wow. Yeah, it was just like, I remember texting my best friend at the time. I was like, my parents just apologized for all that. Oh. And she was like, what? And I'm like, they just said they don't care. I don't know. Uh, I'm in real estate and I own a coffee shop and those are my, my two biggest things that I do right now. So tell me a little bit about, about your organization and what you're doing now yeah. to stop this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're the Conversion Therapy Dropout Network. There weren't any organizations that really catered to conversion therapy survivors. So we have like our uh, monthly events for every Sunday, which is a round table event where people come and they talk about their, you know, their struggles as a survivor. Some of them are coming and talking to other survivors for the first time. Everyone always asks me like, well, you know, we, how do you feel about what you went through? I was like, well, I'm kind of glad it happened to me because if I hadn't gone to this guy, you know, then um, someone else could have gone that wouldn't have been able to do this. And then exactly. now I've been able to turn that into a good thing. Oh, there we are. Hi. Uh, hello. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time and don't know who I am, um, I'm Curtis. Um, I use he, him, or they, them pronouns. Um, I'm the founder of the Conversion Therapy Dropout Network, and this is our Survivor Sunday. Okay, I'm gonna call the therapist that Curtis went to and see if he answers, and if he does, I'm gonna ask him some questions and see what he says. I'm nervous, but let's just do this, right? Okay. okay. Of course, an answer. Okay. I'm gonna leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hi there, my name is Matt. I am actually making a video about conversion therapy. And being that is a practice that I know you do at your office, I have a few questions for you. First of all, I would really love to know your thoughts on conversion therapy and if you truly believe that one can choose to be gay. Secondly, I am wondering, um, and if you know, that those affected by conversion therapy are eight times more likely to commit suicide, six times more likely to have depression, 
three times more likely to use illegal drugs and have three times the normal risk of HIV and STD infection. I guess my main question is, how does that make you feel to know that you're doing work that will most likely, statistically speaking, result in one of your clients being part of that statistic? I would really love to know your thoughts and I'm sending you an email as well, so hopefully I will hear back from you. Thank you. Oh my God. Whew. I did it. See what he says, I'll let you know.